Good day. Welcome to Partakers and to our Christmas 2017 series, God Gets His Hands Dirty. Come on in. We're looking at the Messiah's arrival from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 to 12. Starting at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. He is righteous and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations, and his dominion will be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I have set free your prisoners from the pit in which there is no water. Turn to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. The King is coming. We have seen in Isaiah that the coming Messiah was a servant prophet, a servant disciple, and a servant king. And today we switch over to the book of Zechariah to look at in more detail about this servant king Messiah. Zechariah is is writing a couple of hundred years later than Isaiah. And Zechariah gives us a picture here of how the Messiah will announce his arrival and what sort of qualities that this servant king will have. He comes into Jerusalem on a donkey The phrases daughter of Zion and daughter of Jerusalem are terms symbolizing God's people who believe. It is a scene of exaltation, excitement and emotion. The people recognize this man as their Messiah, their servant king. And he is royalty. He is recognized as the long-waited-for king. He is your king, O nation of Israel. King is, uh, is referring either to the Lord God, Isaiah 43 verse 15, or a king from the line of David, 2 Samuel 3 verse 17. This king is both and is therefore the definitive king of Isaiah 9 verse 7. He is described as yours because this king is not a foreigner but an Israelite, but his arrival is not just for the benefit and gain of Israel, as Zechariah goes on to clarify. He is for all nations. And this king is righteous and rules righteously. In the example of Alexander the Great, we see a ruler who had great vanity, and this vanity caused him to act injudiciously at times. Alexander the Great could have been the fulfillment of the previous section of Zechariah, particularly with his marauding forces, who conquered all known lands as far as India. This kingly ruler, however, will reign with righteousness and justice and fairness. This Messiah king will desire to enact God's will in all circumstances and at all times. He will have and give perfect obedience to God. Throughout the Old Testament and in Isaiah, as we have seen, righteousness is part of the Messiah. And he brings salvation. This servant king comes with salvation and saving power. The Messiah shows himself as one who saves and offers salvation to the people. He has come to help and restore people back into an obedient relationship with God. Again, as we have seen with Isaiah, who wrote about 200 years ago, before Zechariah, righteousness and salvation are combined in the servant king. Isaiah 45, verse 8, and chapter 51, verse 4. And he is gentle. In the translation that I have used, the word is lowly, but perhaps a better translation is gentle. The extended meaning of this word in Hebrew signifies a person or a man who has known suffering and sorrow and has lived and lives a simple lifestyle. 
Humility is worn by this servant king like a crown. There is no pride in this man, this king, but he has a gentle and humble spirit. This is reflected again by Isaiah in Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 3, where the servant king would endure rejection and suffering. And perhaps the greatest symbol of his gentleness and his humility is the transportation he is on. A donkey. Donkeys were ridden by every class of people. And this is to signify that the king is one of the people and he arrives unassumingly. So what now? What will this Messiah do? Peace will reign. The servant king Messiah has brought peace with him. By this he has established the environment in order for total peace to exist. Peace comes through people telling the good news that Isaiah talked about in Isaiah 52 verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Peace with God comes only through the sacrifice of the suffering servant king of Isaiah chapter 53. A life of obedience to God in all those who follow this Messiah will bring about peace between people and nations. This Messiah's reign is not limited to Israel, but all nations of the world. And the second coming of the Messiah is hinted at here, but we will save that for a couple of days' time. And this Messiah, this servant king, he releases prisoners. This Messiah will release those who are enslaved to sin and are prisoners to sin's power. He will deliver them because of the covenant that exists between God and Israel. But this king will have a new covenant between God and all people of all nations where God will live inside those who place their hope and their trust in him. This new covenant means all people can be saved and be set free from the guilt and stain of their old sinful ways. They will be able to live a life of total obedience to God by submitting to this king. And how is Jesus this king? This prophecy by Zechariah, is seen as being fulfilled when as both Matthew and John recall how Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Matthew 21 verses 1 to 5 When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethsphage to the Mount of Olives then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them Go into the village that is opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the scene is recalled by John in John chapter 12, verses 12 to 15. On the next day, a great multitude had come to the feast. When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel! Jesus, having found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Don't be afraid, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king comes, sitting on a donkey's colt. This is Jesus, the Messiah, the servant king, who was and is a gentle king, reigning in righteousness, offering salvation, and has set up the environment for peace on earth to reign. It is through this Jesus Christ that peace with God is established and can be had. This Jesus, who through his sacrifice on the cross, enables all peoples of every nation of all time to have peace with God and have God himself live inside them. This is Jesus, the Messiah, 
servant king, servant prophet, servant disciple. Thank you.